Yes, students. So, uh, where were we? We were talking about the Industrial Revolution. But you have to understand one thing, that uh, Industrial Revolution uh, came to the remaining part of the France uh, slightly later than when it had happened in the England. But as we just saw in the previous video, that uh, because of the Industrial Revolution, a whole new segment within the society was created, which was known as the middle class, which was more intellectually uh, gifted, which was uh, which, ha which had no more knowledge about how to run the society. They were about philosophy. They were about they used they were they used to talk about mathematics. They used to talk about medicines, uh, ideology about the statecraft. Everything now, everything uh, was now about a whole new world was now had had now actually opened up because of the new ideas which were being uh, brought about and uh, brought about by the middle class. It was going to transform the European society forever. Uh, now. When you have all these kinds of things, when you have intellectuals now discussing great ideas in the coffee houses of France, naturally uh, you want to bring about a lot of changes. Now, for the first time, there was a segment which was created in the intellectual world, in, in the intellectual world, which was known as uh, the idea that is the liberal ideas, the world of liberal ideas, which was which was given the name of liberalism. Okay. Now, uh, so if there is something called liberal, then as we know, even in the normal English uh, dic dictionary, that if there you have something called uh, liberalism, that is, even if it is an idea for that matter, then you would also have conservatives. Okay, because you cannot have just liberals. You would always always have uh, conservatives running neck and neck with you. Now, let's talk about. What do you understand by these two terms? It's very important to understand it because uh, you have conservatives uh, even now. It is not just that the liberals uh, came about in the early part of 18th um, uh, or rather the uh, early part of uh, 19th century and uh, you know when it was there for a few decades and that uh, uh, the world of liberalism vanished. No. Even today, you have liberals in India, you have liberals in America, you have liberal policies and politics being played in the streets of Europe, even today. So, and again, you have the conservatives, like uh, in, in all the societies. So, but who were these liberals? Coming to the more important point. Now, liberals would, uh, they were essentially, like even when you talk about, liberals are considered to be more open-minded, even in our nat nat naturally when we talk about he's a very liberal person or he's a very conservative person, what we essentially imply is that a liberal is someone who is much more open-minded than a conservative. Now, in, at that point in time, that is in 19th century, what liberal, uh, liberals were standing for and what they were fighting for was change. They wanted a rapid, a rapid pace of change. They wanted the things, all the shackles to be thrown out. The, the world that had existed for um, centuries and centuries, that world they wanted to transform within a very short span of five or six years. Okay, They wanted always a very rapid change of uh, reforms. And uh, now liberals have always believed, um, even then and even now, that there should not be any privileges. Okay, and uh, liberals have, uh, at least at that point in time, they were completely and completely against kings and monarchy, and they were definitely not very religious minded. They wanted that, you know, they sh the church should have no role to play in the society except probably organizing uh, the church mass on Sundays, and what is uh, what else is there for the church to do? That's what they uh, believed in. And, uh, but one thing, uh, now these are, very, um, these are the things which uh, are not very easy for uh, people to kind of, uh, you know, church would always remain important. Uh, there, there would be even today, as you know, you still have the uh, king of France, uh, sorry, the uh, queen of England, then you have kings in Holland, then you have kings in Sweden, 
So, you know, it's not that that they have uh, been completely gone. You have been able to send them away. And they enjoy those things. You have king even in Spain. They enjoy those privileges and power because the people want them to from those countries, right? Now, even today in India, there are a lot of Rajas. And why do, they, do you think they have all those Rajas? Do you think uh, uh, they would be able to enjoy those powers and privileges if the people of India didn't want them to? Clearly not. But one thing which uh, liberalism very strongly stood about was uh, the natural rights of people. Now, in earlier times, it, the, uh, the rights was always something, human rights, the right to equality, the rights essentially which the human being had, was, uh, all, it always flowed from the king, the ruler. But now, uh, the liberal ideas meant and what they talked about was that the rights are inalienable. You are born with the rights. Human beings, irrespective of the economic strata that you come from or you belong to or uh, whatever your race, your skin color, you are born with rights. Because you happen to be a human being, the moment you are born, the day you are born, you have those rights. You do not have to petition it to uh, the government in any part of the world for that matter to grant you those rights. You always, you always have them. And now this was a very, very revolutionary idea even in those times. Uh, people uh, could, could, could never come to terms with that, what it actually meant. And people took decades to explain it and to convince people that yes, this this was the thing for the future that human beings would be born with rights okay and uh, the other very important thing was about that the liberals wanted elections uh, in uh, their respective societies now maybe not the universal uh, adult universal suffrage in uh, the whole of Europe, because the liberals were, again, they were about elections, but do not confuse it, they were not about uh, the adult um, universal suffrage, right? So we would uh, see that part a bit later. Now, what? who were the conservatives? Now, conservatives were, as the word suggests, they were mainly about the status quo. They were happy with what, they were the, they were the ones who just wanted the existing system to remain existing, but they wanted, they said that, okay, fine, if you want to bring about certain changes, yes, the improvements can be made within the existing, existing system. Why to get rid of the existing system? Now, this is something which the conservatives want even today, even in the existing democracies where you might not be having, like even in India for that matter, uh, it is uh, uh, your head of the government, that is Mr. Uh, the Prime Minister, that is currently Mr. Narendra Modi, he's democratically elected. He's no king, right? But the conservatives are the ones who want the policies to remain that way. You know, and if uh, they they do not advocate that the whole system should be overthrown, like the liberals in India, they want all that kind of revolution without having uh, any alternative to suggest. But there are conservatives in India who are happy with the way uh, the uh, the system has been there within the constitution. That there is a parliament, then th that there is a Lok Sabha, there is a Rajya Sabha. Then uh, you have the governments divided into executive, judiciary, legislature. They are happy with that, and they, uh, the conservatives always have said, and even at that point in Europe, that if some changes need to be made, they should be made within the existing system. Now, what else do the conservatives stand for? And that's what they have been standing for over the last 200, 300 years. Uh, now, they always want a strong army. Conservatives are far more nationalistic in any society for that matter, not just in India or India, anywhere in the world. Conservatives are the ones who would be always uh, talking about in terms of the greater glory of the nation, the glory of the motherland, uh, that they should have strong army, that the enemies uh, should be uh, obliterated and the enemies should always be taught the lesson. So they are the ones who are conservatives. Okay, We shall continue tomorrow. Thank you.